Hey y'all, it's your favorite Jato YouTuber. Welcome back to another video where I bitch about stud towers with gameplay inside of them for an abnormally long amount of time. Today I finally finished every sub realm in Jato, meaning, you'd guessed it, that's my video topic for today. Before that, I gotta go over some quick ground rules. So a sub realm will just be in this case an area inside of an area that gives at least one tower point, so time loss plane doesn't count, and no, the fucking neat badge is in a tower win. Also, I'll be putting all the towers at the end of a segment on a tier list, taking the average score, removing the best and worst towers to make it fair, and dictating the sub realm placements with that. Got it? Good. Here's my ranking of every sub realm in Jato. Yeah, Pit of Misery barely counts, but it is a sub realm, alright. It only has one cannon tower, which is more in design choices, which yes, does look pretty more. That's all I have to say about it. The rest is just old soul crushing towers, which, you should know at this point, is another word for shit. I haven't played through much of these towers though, let alone beat it, so I don't have that much to say about them other than toxic is so fucking bad. Holy shit. Here's a tier list with an average score of tower. Truly inspiring. Ah, uh, fuck. Paradise Atoll was supposed to be an event. I guess that didn't work out. I guess that's also why there are two steeples that both have cliffside in the name and look identical to one another. The great Inferno's progression was actually starting to make sense. Garden of Ishul and Forgotten Ridge were very welcome additions and made getting to new areas a whole lot easier. However, the spatial system was still a piece of shit. Someone goes back and forth from long to boring to long and boring while wow, so innovative. This makes trying to play the actual good towers in this world such a struggle, and one of the biggest contributors to this is Paradise fucking Atoll. I hate this thing. Why in the beginner area are half the towers challenging and above? Who thought this was a good idea? It helps out most of these said challenging plus towers are completely insufferable. SOHS and TOCI weren't that bad, I guess. I somewhat enjoyed them, even if TOCI has fucking wind. Which is the dumbest thing ever, but you know, at least it's not steep of cliffside falls. Oh boy, was SOC of shit. Terrible rival progression, mediocre gameplay, lack of bone progress. It has everything I disliked about modern towers all bundled up into one big sack of garbage. Rep progression is, in general, a huge issue here. This area does a thing a lot that I absolutely despise, which is giving a big fat fucking sign explaining the mechanics. I mean, for God's sake, this game has a timer. Who is reading a necessity to not fall into floor 1? There's some other things I can complain about here too, like TOTTT and SODD, but I think you get my point by now that I don't like this area. I guess it wasn't all bad, the lobby was great, and I like SOMM and SOUB a lot. However, my main problem is even the quality of these things. It's the fact that this is in zone 1. Beginners are going to go into this area and get half a tower point, as there is no medium steeple, and only one easy steeple. This area is a husk of what an actually good beginner area should be. But hey, on the bright side, it's only up from here, right? Arcane area is something, alright. For the first sub realm of the game, I expected this one to be a lot worse, but looking back at it, it's just painfully mediocre for the most part. Do you guys remember Steeple Twisted Crystals or Steeple of Atmospheric Powers? Of course you don't, no one does, which is the worst aspect of this area. Though what I am very strongly against here is the lobby. The building isn't bad, the problem is the colors, which god they are so ugly. Also, in Neodemius' 75 things that annoyed me video, he said that the worst thing that can happen to a tower is it becoming a temporary tower. However, I disagree, though I agree with everything else. Please message me back, Neo. The worst thing that can happen is it becoming a fucking practice hobby. I mean, sure, it's permanent, but be honest, none of you knew the steeple existed until the monthly challenge, despite being leaks better than almost everything else here. Another shit thing is these two, yeah, SOME and SOWC. Which Calamity is one of those towers that doesn't seem like it's going to be bad, but then this, this, and this happens. Not to mention, the gimmick is pointless. Like, I never understood why people would put hand buttons slash keys in their tower, other than to be a complete jackass. 
And that's all I mean. Holy shit. I'm not gonna start with the steeple. All you need to know is that it's going into the F tier where it belongs. Anyways, the last two funny things about this area is it hosts one of the only gold star towers in the game, as well as a secret tower that unlocks if you beat everything here. Let's get the bad one out of the way. Yes, magical collaborations at what point has gold star. Why are you guys laughing? Yes, this mid-ass steeple was on the same level as really nasty ideas and orienting oscillating opinions. That is hysterical. I gotta say, I do like the building of it and the client objects are cool, but the pacing and the gameplay of the steeple is subpar to say the least. Despite all that, it goes into the C tier. I don't care enough about this thing for it to be lower. And at least it gave the ending of this area a cool feel, I guess. And last but certainly not least is Tower of Icy Adventures, which carries this shit hard. TOIA was always the underdog. It got removed from Arcane Era extremely quickly, as well as the revamp at one point, receiving a 6.5 out of 30. God damn. But finally, after a long last, it got in and what a tower it is. I honestly like this more than Kohat, that's my terrible take for today. Kohat is incredible, but damn, there's a reason I haven't been in it. Shit takes half my day of sight right now. Unfortunately for me, I have something called a life. I see Adventures is in that 30 minute range without dialogue, which makes it long enough to feel like the experience, but sure enough to where my brain isn't melting by the end. S tier. But yeah, Arcane Area is not good. Here's my rankings. Forgotten Ridge was a much needed addition to Jato. I've said already, but the game has really bad progression, so it's nice to add something like this, which is not only beginner friendly, but has some nice challenges for more intermediate players in the game. Well, nice kinda. The hard towers go from, okay that was pretty good, to, what the fuck they just play? A lot of this area is like that. I enjoy SOMD, but then you get to jolly good fun and yeah, jolly good fun my ass, this is just tower of jump, free hello smiley hello. There's also a lot of, yeah. It's fine, I guess. But okay, it's much better than wasting multiple hours on some piece of shit good for nothing steep. But holy shit, do I dislike Paradise Atom. Anyways, to stop this section from being too vague, I'll talk about a few towers that interested me. So, first, we got Dementia Steeple. This exists and doesn't give any tower points for some reason. I guess the careers forgot. <laughs> e tier. Tower from Mentire is my favorite tower here, and for, for many good reasons, too. A lot of the accurate old Kato tires like wall punching emulate the fan creator tires back when no one knew what the hell they were doing. But TOII feels like it was made by Oberon too. The weird transparent block gimmick reminded me a lot of that shadow section in Tower Rage, and most of the tower just felt so good to play through. The skips too were a nice addition, even if they are, let's just say, suboptimal. Anyways, next up we got. Oh god, silly weird nostalgia. This still is worthless. At least when SOTP was made, sure I hate it, but you can tell how much effort was put into creating the gameplay and designing it. However, this still is just Control C, Control V, and it got in somehow. Also, despite being copy and pasted, the silo could just not stand being labeled lazy and had to be the absolute worst thing in existence. This fucking swinging platform on the TOLD floor. How did this happen? Not to mention, the Silo likes to add in sections for towers that nobody likes. I hate playing through it. It's an easy F tier. Next is TOMB, guys. You like mind breaking? Well, I do, honestly. This was an enjoyable experience, and I'm glad there are more insane difficulty towers, as that for me is that sweet spot for difficulty and enjoyability. Not to mention, there were some really creative sections throughout that actually play into the gameplay well. Well, most of them. But yeah, no bad sober. Here's my rankings. Lost River was surprisingly fun to complete. I didn't expect some old ass whitelisted towers to be this enjoyable, but hey, what do I know? It's number three. I guess we gotta go over the dog shit first, which actually wasn't that bad. So, if, uh, inside situations is just odd. I didn't hate it, but there were a bunch of sections that were just needlessly tedious and diverging layers. First off, god damn is floor 1 bright. At second, floor 10 was so bad. I actually called it because it was taking way too long, but besides that, this again wasn't that terrible. 
I like how unique most of the towers here were. We got some cool ass towers like losing our seal and triple jeopardy that didn't have to needlessly focus on the sign. Though holy shit triple jeopardy is ugly. Not to mention there are some very quality creations here which I will go over now. Tower of Od Odyssey was a really nice experience. It wasn't very special, it just had some great gameplay and design. Tallying every mistake was the last tower I beat here and damn did it do a good job at emulating that classic Juke Reese tower feel. Also it improved on a lot of aspects too that I feel like Juke lacks on, like the gameplay and the route progression. I did all this tower without a guide and I gotta say it does an excellent job explains its client objects. Unlike a certain area, Totem respects the player as an actual human being. It doesn't write an entire essay on some piece of shit sign telling you what to do, or I give you short signs like this that don't fully explain what it does, or just straight up lets you figure it out on your own. The only thing I really disliked about this one was when you fell outside you couldn't click back, clip back in. While this makes sense, I really would have liked it better if you could just, you know, get back in, but it's whatever and it didn't take away from the experience. And finally, we have the first soul crushing tower in a sub run. Yes, this came up before mind breaking. Unsettling heights. Two UH is great. I swear, some in insane towers get away with the craziest shit. Like, half this tower is over the void, and I don't hate it. How is that possible? Well, the gameplay is honestly really great. I like how it's kind of in between of really complicated gameplay and super simple Kato stuff. And stuff like Floor 5 just had some nice ass jumps. And the design and color scheme are weirdly pleasing. Like it's just a bunch of random colors here, yeah, it looks so good. My only problem is 7 which has some really awkward jumps and this thing on 8 which is the cause of 90% of my fails. So I jump too early and don't get enough height, however when I jump too late I get shoved off. Yeah I don't like this thing, but besides that th this is some incredible shit. I'm surprised I like this area as much as I did. Here's my radix. Okay, so the next two are tied with both having an average of 8 tier, meaning I get to choose which one is the best. You already know which one is the best, so I'll just say that... Garden and Vichel is number 2. Okay, so Garden and Vichel, go into this big ass waterfall, do some gameplay, and wow, what a lobby. I haven't been talking about the lobbies that much, but besides Arcanary, all of them are incredible. This especially. God damn man, I don't even like the color scheme all that much, but the building is undeniably good. Before I uh, ejaculate over this masterpiece, let's look at the steeples. For our worst steeples, I actually don't have a single one in DRC. Yeah, plot twist, right? Despite being second, this is easily the most consistent area in the game, besides Pit and Mystery, but that's consistent for a very different reason. But yeah, the steeples. Last place is Devil's Snare, mostly because for an atmosphere focused tower, the atmosphere sucks ass. I don't know, I think TODD's great atmosphere was because you couldn't see shit half the time. Here, I hate to be a guy, but I don't think Well Lit Cave is scaring anyone. However, the reason this is in lower is because, you know, it was actually fun to play through. Though, a missed opportunity for sure, and I hope the sequel is better. There's also Flourishing Wastelands, which has grown me out on. When I beat this, I thought, wow, this is the biggest piece of dog shit I've ever seen. But now I like it. Sure, the first three floors are pretty shit, but I like the gimmick as well as the gameplay in the second half. Though, the final draft is just super unnecessary, like, dude, what the fuck? But yeah, there's a lot of good that I won't cover for time, but holy shit, man. Overgrowth, Nightfall, Feudal Foliage, and Green Esplicity, just to name a few, are top tier stuff. And I'm glad this area turned out to be so good. Okay, so I only have two towers in S, which you could probably guess which is which, but whatever. Number two for GOE is Steeple of Buoyant Automation by Dusk Pyramid. I might be the biggest Dusk Pyramid suck off on the planet. I have all of his towers in S, but what can I say? He makes some really quality stuff, this included. For starters, the gameplay is so fucking good. I don't even know how to explain it. It's very unconventional, but so satisfying too. I don't know, just look at the screen man, it's so fun. Another thing I like is the client object usage. Not only are these like shover platform thingies really interesting, but I also enjoy their implementations. The clients always go well with the gameplay, making a tower feel like what the name suggests, machines that float on water. 
My only problem is the steeple kind of just ends. I would have liked the sixth floor, but me wanting more is probably less of a problem and more of a testament to how good this thing is. Instant S tier. And boys, Tower of Perilous Antipod is number one, very deservingly. This tower is almost too good. The design is top tier. The gameplay is great. The atmosphere is fantastic. And holy shit, good route progression in a modern area? Yes, this tower gives you warnings it's on dangerous things like with these nifty little icons. This is very useful while playing and is the best way to indicate towers. Please any Paradise Atoll developer, take some fucking notes. S tier all the way and Floor 10's design is insane. Here's my ranking. Well, this is it. Silent Abyss is number one. I love the lobby on this thing, mainly the hub. There's a reason I use this for a thumbnail. The towers are also holy shit are they good. But first I gotta cover the worst, which is this one. Steeple Midnight Acropolis. Well, this is a piece of shit. I didn't have the worst experience with it, but looking back at it, it's not very good at all. Okay, so first, the fucking signs. The tower has bad rep progression. Half the time, I jump on something assuming it's something else just to get fucked over. What I was meant to do was read this dumb sign. Heh, <laughs> great, reading. The pacing on this tower is also weird. It goes from high action gameplay to a puzzle. But all of this pales in comparison to the final stretch. Yes, this has a final stretch, don't ask why. So first part is bad. I guess the only noteworthy thing is that it has a stupid puzzle when there's a timer of doom, but other than that, if the tower ended here, it would have been fine. No. There's another final stretch over instant kills, and holy shit, this is impossible, it's agreed. Who thought this was a good idea? This is so fucking pointless. I'll put it in D tier though, mainly because I fluked the final stretches, but still man, this is not good at all. Anything else I didn't like? Actually, no, not at all. While SOII and SOWG were kind of just mid, they were far from bad, meaning yes, we are on the good shit now. And instead of talking about just the S tiers, I'll be talking about my two favorite A tier towers along with the S tiers. Tower of Shallow Waters doesn't have the best gameplay or mechanics. What it makes up for though is the atmosphere, which is incredible. I never knew atmosphere could override gameplay and creativity, but hey, given how many catch nets are in this thing, it feels like less of a tower and more of a design showcase. You can see how much effort was put into this thing, it just looks incredible. My only problem is I hate when careers put shitty lore in their towers before boss fights. Like TUT, who cares? I'm just trying to beat this garbage to get a tower point. And this one does the same with the exact same monologues, but a scary client object. Like, dude, is this necessary? No, fucking is it. And I would have preferred it if I could just skip the dialogue, but it's still A tier. Tower of There Is No Tower is another impressive tower. Or, not tower, I guess. Like, the building on these sections is incredible. The gameplay isn't half bad, and the voice acting is peak. You destroy it, bro. That, I just gotta, I gotta pay for that now. Can you, you please just stop vandalizing my tower and leave? Where was this voice actor behind this masterpiece when Breaking Bad was still getting new seasons? He would have found his true calling in this show, Gustavo Fring. Speaking of Breaking Bad, the fucking Mike Ehrmantraut speech at the end was way too funny, I don't even know why. Okay, so the yes, dear. First we got, god damn it again, I told you I was a dust experiment suck off. The steeple of m ma ma maling Yo, how do you say this shit? SOMB has some of the best gameplay of the sub realm, not to mention it actually has a good conclusive ending unlike his last steeple. This one was a blast to play through. S tier though. Next is Tower of Ten to... to Christ, where are these fucking names? Tower of Tenebris Depths is Tower of Perilous Antipode, but dark. I like the building here a lot. 
The color scheme reminds me a lot of an old Roblox Halloween event, and the gameplay is... It's so good. Like TUPA, it has these nice little indicators, which yes, are still just as good and useful. I honestly probably like this one more than TUPA, as it has this cool ass boss. Not only is the music great, holy shit I need to finish this game. But there's... Oh fuck, there's a monologue. It's okay though, because the boss isn't just jump over obstacles until time runs out. You gotta shoot stuff like keys to access buttons, and it's just really nice. I'll be a little too easy. Even without healing items, I don't think my health would ever drop past 70. But uh, who the fuck cares? This tower is still getting a very deserved S tier. And for my final S, are you surprised? Tower of Ancestral Interferences. Oh my god. I have too much to say about this tower. I'll be talking about this one in another video. For now, it's the easiest S on the planet. Here's my rankings of this area. So, in conclusion, while Paradise Atto can suckle on my sack, <laughs> the fuck, sub realms are such a good addition to this game. Not only do they give new players much easier tower points, but the quality of these areas are up to par and help better than most of the new zones. After zone 8, I was like, damn, I guess I don't like modern towers anymore, but playing through Silent Abyss was just the best experience possible. Also, yes, I know that there's a Ring 6 sub realm coming soon, but knowing the JTO team, this shit is going to take like 6 months at the very least. Though, I'll definitely cover it once it comes up. Alright, that's it, and thank you so much for the overwhelming amount of support I've garnered. I didn't think I would get this cl I would be this close to 100 subscribers this quickly, but here we are. I want to make it my goal to get 200 subs by the end of the year. If you make here and enjoy the video, subscribe.